Keeping marijuana as a Schedule I drug severely restricts the capability of scientists to study its potential medical benefits. At the same time, the lack of scientific research on medical use is offered as evidence to keep it in Schedule I. And as you know, for Schedule I drugs, particularly marijuana, uh, it's very difficult to do research. Only certain researchers can get the certification and licensure necessary to handle the drug. And then, of course, you need the funding to study it. You need approval from university uh, institutional review boards. And it's a cumbersome, expensive, time-consuming, and tremendously challenging process to research marijuana. <laughs> but that research is what will inform the medical community of marijuana's medical use. And what you need and what you can do are largely compromised by, th by this federal government policy. Back in October 1970, President Nixon signed the Controlled Substances Act into law. The statute establishes federal U.S. drug policy under which the manufacturer importation, possession, use, and distribution of certain substances is regulated. And one of the key sections of the act, as you know, is a division of all drugs and other potentially harmful chemicals and substances into five distinct categories or schedules, depending on the drug's acceptable medical use and its potential for abuse or dependency. Schedule one has a high potential for abuse and includes heroin, LSD, ecstasy, of course, and, and cannabis. Of course, the most uh, restrictive category, Schedule I, is reserved for the highly addictive drugs that lack medical value and any level of safe use, even under medical supervision. American support for legalizing marijuana continues to set new records with 66% of U.S. adults now in favor of making the drug legal, although people are unlikely to have similar ideas about what that means. That's two out of three Americans. Although some states that have legalized or decriminalized marijuana have often allowed people to seal, expunge, or reclassify a range of marijuana convictions on their records, this isn't always the case. Advocates for social justice argue that marijuana reform should be paired with criminal justice reform to help people convicted of past crimes rebuild their lives, get jobs, find housing. But bills that would remove or reduce convictions on people's records are often opposed by lawmakers and prosecutors who argue that people who knowingly violated prior laws shouldn't be let off the hook just because the law changed. What automatically happens if marijuana stays in the CSA but is rescheduled? Like there's still the possibility that under rescheduling, the National Institutes of Health could begin funding research, which is a big deal for researchers, and researchers might also not need to go to the DEA for the sole source of the marijuana they're using in research. The justification for the Cole Memorandum would be much stronger. Um, forbearance and prosecutorial discretion makes way more sense if it's not a Schedule One drug as it currently is. Um, and then more marijuana-derived uh, medicines could actually be vetted and uh, approved as drugs under the FDA system.